So we make it a priority to do all of our work in CAD. We also prototype, but we do end up putting all of our ideas somewhere along the process into <coughs> SOLIDWORKS. And so we did end up prototyping a few things. We prototyped a ball uh, mechanism to take in a ball and then be able to spit it out. We also prototyped something with a Velcro and a popper just to be able to grab a one of the disc hatches, hatch discs, and then just pop it off onto the port or hatch door needed. Um, and then we put those along with a, a uh, one of the Andy Marr chassis into SolidWorks and I can start showing you what we've done right now. So this is our main assembly as it is right now and it's actually come along quite a ways. We have put a full day and a half or so into this um, with a bunch of people who are rather skilled at CAD. Um, we have, let's look at some parts which we uh, quickly prototyped. This right here was, is effectively the ball mechanism which we made. Um, it's not actually that complex, it only has five or six parts, but this is about the dimensions of our prototype as well. We also uh, spent a little bit more time on the CAD of the, on this CAD piece. This is our disc popping mechanism. Uh, if I hide the disc real quick, we have a pad on top and on the bottom with Velcro on it. We have pneumatic plungers that will push a... that are attached to... Um, it's not shown, but there is a plate right here that'll push just so that we have an even distribution of force on the disc. We found it sometimes catching right at the corners if we just had the two poppers in line, but otherwise they worked rather well. Um, this whole assembly is a prismatic joint. It is going to be fixed to a larger assembly via this block. And uh, this piston has six inches or so, which it'll push this whole front facing portion out. So the cylinder is fixed. This block is fixed. And uh, not shown are that there are two rods that go right here that bear all the weight and the torque of this large piece because you never want to have all the weight and the torque being just placed on the pneumatic cylinder. We came into a problem in that we have three mechanisms and two sides of our robot. Uh, this, we have a climbing mechanism which we decided to allocate to an entire side of our robot. And so we had to figure out how to combine our ball mechanism and our uh, disc mechanism. Our chassis started out um, just with an anti mark chassis and we started attaching some simple one by one inch tubing to make a rough frame, a very boxy frame. And the ball started being attached to one side and the climbing mechanism to the other side. And that provided enough structural basis for us to uh, to get a lot of the early prototyping in CA or uh, early iterations of CAD done. You can see we've replaced that with some much nicer looking gussets and braces. Now we started thinking about load um, because most of this is mostly for the load of our climbing mechanism. But that's complicated, so I'll save it for a moment. Our solution to our problem with the ball and the disc is that we were able to very carefully connect the two. Not shown here is that this whole piece uh, this is one static piece. This is our ball mechanism and it'll piv be pivoted, rotated along an axis along an axis back here so that it can go down to dump into the cargo or up into the, well, either the rocket port or the cargo ship hull. Um, we also have the ability to retract it all the way back uh, 
to shift our mass for our climbing mechanism, but that's, that's for later. Um, but what we needed was that we needed to have, we are either using, per the rules, one ball or one disc. So we decided to take our, take our disc handling component and mount it fixed to this. So when this, uh, so when the ball mechanism lowers or raises, the disc mechanism will follow it. And we want to use the disc mechanism, we just need to make sure the ball mechanism is in uh, a vertical position. And so everything seems to clear rather well, and so these two were actually playing rather nicely together. Uh, and then on back on here, you can see here is the here's the pipe which will rotate the ball mechanism up and down, and we have all this middle clearance space right here for the either the disc mechanism and the both me uh, and the ball mechanism to swing around. And it looks something like this. We had to we have to pay special attention to the fact that there are uh, rods sticking out here as well as this pneumatic cylinder which can't collide. And I think we just barely pulled it off. We also, since we're using pneumatics uh, for the disc, we're also using pneumatics to control the position of the ball. So we have a couple cylinders here. Um, but the real work, the real uh, complex part of this is that while we weren't originally deciding to do a level three climb, a high climb, we were really just going to try and go up to the middle branch, but we had some great ideas, and we really thought we could go for that high climb. So this will either work or it won't work. Uh, nothing in between. But we do think the ball and the disc mechanism will work. The plot of the climbing mechanism is that if this is facing the ramp, and this giant box is that high step, we have a claw here that will... Uh, the box is not proportionally sized to be appropriate, or the sizing is not quite right. But the claw will wrap around. Can I? Oh, that's fixed. The claw will wrap around and grab the size of the box, and then, assuming the box is fixed, the robot as a whole will rotate itself up. The robot as itself will rotate itself up about this and the critical part here is that we can get so we can get the center of gravity of the robot just over this pivot if we can get it over on this side um, and as you can see all of our disc and ball mechanisms are on this top end for that reason as well then this should be stable even after the power gets killed to our robot. So there's not actually too much here, but it has seen a lot of iteration. Here is the rough of our climbing mechanism, and I do mean rough. Um, a lot of attention has been shifted towards the structure supporting a robot. As you can see, by all those gussets and thicker tubes and, say, dinky little one inch by one inch piping. Um, These two arms will go all the way out, and once fully extended, uh, these are fixed right now, but once fully extended, are big enough to go around the box. One side is fixed. Um, so there's only two degrees of motion for this climbing mechanism intentionally. One is the giant swinging of a robot and the arm, and the other is on this left side. This left side is going to apply enough force we're working on a four to one conversion, uh, four to one uh, couple bar mechanism in order to get enough uh, force to hold the box down. But we're, this is still very rough at the moment.